Welcome, everyone. I'm here with Kenny Lowe, Director for Multi-Cloud Evangelism from Dell Technologies, and he's also a Microsoft MVP. And we are going to talk about the Dell Apex Cloud Platform for Azure. So awesome, Kenny, to have you here today. It's awesome to be here, and it's always great to catch up with you as well. Thank you very much. Um, so, Kenny, a few days back, uh, Dell announced and the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure at the Dell Technology World 2023. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more um, about this and why we are so excited about this? Sure. I mean, simply put, the Apex Cloud Pl Platform for Azure is our next generation Azure Stack HCI offering that will launch later this year uh, based on our new 16th generation hardware platforms. So this is fantastic. And obviously, a lot of people already know about Azure Stack, HCI, and Dell had already offerings for years together with Microsoft. Um, so can you tell us a little bit why Dell and Microsoft did actually collaborate um, on building the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure? Oh, boy. Why did Dell and Microsoft collaborate on building anything? We've been huge partners for the last 35 years, uh, building loads of interesting and exciting things together. And actually, if you look at the heritage that we have in the hybrid cloud infrastructure space specifically, we've been building these sorts of solutions for almost a decade now. We launched the cloud platform system, CPS, back in 2014. And every year since then, Dell and Microsoft have brought out something new, better, evolved, and enhanced uh, over time since then. So when Windows Server 2016 first launched, that brought storage spaces direct into it and the ability to do hyper-converged infrastructure for the first time. So we jumped on that and we made our first uh, hyper-converged reference architecture there. From there, we moved to our Story Spaces Direct Ready nodes on our 13th generation hardware in 20, uh, 2018, I think that was. Uh, then we brought out uh, S2D Ready nodes on our 14th generation hardware, uh, where we brought our first open manage integration for Windows Admin Center as well. And then over the last couple of years, we've been uh, bringing our 15th generation to plat uh, platforms to market with our Dell integrated system for Azure Stack HCI using the Azure Stack HCI operating system as the basis for that platform there. And um, so every year we bring out something new, better, improved, enhanced, new features, making it easier for customers to deploy and consume and use. Um, and the same holds true this year as well. So we're bringing out the Apex Cloud platform for Microsoft Azure to take us to a whole new level there. Uh, that's the goal here as we come into later this year. That's fantastic. And again, I mean, hybrid cloud is such an important part for so many um, customers and organizations out there um, that it's really critical to like offer them some great solutions out there. And I'm really excited about this. Um, but again, as you mentioned, um, Dell, that, that partnership exists for a very long time. And Dell obviously had Azure Stack API solutions um, for quite some time now. Um, so can you tell us the difference now what is the difference between the Apex and the, Dell, the existing Dell offerings we had uh, before? Yeah, really good question. And actually, if we look at um, what we've been doing with Microsoft over the last several years, we've built the number one Azure Stack HCI system in the world, more deployments of Azure Stack HCI than any other platform. But at the same time, we were building out the number one VMware-based HCI platform as well with VxRail. So VxRail has become not just the number one VMware-based HCI platform, but actually the number one across every ecosystem out there. And a lot of that was due to the huge amount of engineering effort and software development that we put into that platform. But while we did that, we weren't taking advantage of all that innovation in our Azure Stack HCI systems. They were being developed separately and in isolation. So what we've done with the launch of our 16th generation platforms is take the opportunity to harmonize how we approach these separate ecosystems and bring the innovation that's gone into VxRail into the Azure Stack HCI world today. So in practical terms, what that means is that in VxRail, we have a VM that runs inside it, which hosts a whole bunch of Dell microservices, really great services that we've created, which do all the integration between vSphere and the hardware and the operating system and Dell services and our Cloud, cloud IQ services. It's the, the linchpin that ties everything together within VxRail. So we've taken that and we've brought it into Azure Stack HCI. We've not copied it, we've not tried to recreate it. We've taken that same code base and moved it into Azure Stack HCI, and then we expose it into Windows Admin Center. So the same as we've done through vSphere in the VxRail world, we expose into Windows Admin Center in the Azure Stack HCI world, and it brings us this extremely robust platform of capabilities that we've been bringing to our VMware customers for years to all of our Azure Stack customers now as well, which is just 
awesome. All that innovation, all that investment, we now get to showcase within the Microsoft world as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love I love what, what we are hearing and making sure that there's the right choice uh, for the customers there. Absolutely. So there's obviously a lot of things which go into this. And um, maybe you can talk a little bit about like um, what it is offering now, what like what can we actually do? Also for customers, maybe we're not that familiar with Azure Stack HCI, maybe and the Azure Arc and the Azure hybrid story. Um, maybe you can explain that a little bit and, and dive into that. Sure. I mean, Azure Stack HCI is here to, for our Azure customers. So people who want to use Azure and who are using Azure and want to extend that experience on premises. That's the fundamental value proposition here is take the value of Azure and bring it anywhere that you want it. Uh, that is the goal of Azure Stack HCI. And one of the fundamental value propositions of Azure is that you don't have to care about all the stuff that happens under the covers. When you're deploying things into a Microsoft data center, how much do you care about the underlying hardware and the update process and things like that? We want to bring as much of that to bear on premises as well and make those things as easy as possible. The value for you, your customer, is running things on top of this. It's the applications that you deploy. It's the AKS services that you're creating. It's the Azure services you're bringing on top. So as much as possible, we want to make all of the deployment and day two operations experience seamless, easy, and uh, consistent across all platforms as well. Um, so deployment is one area we've worked long and hard on here to make it as simple and easy as possible. So previously, the deployment experience within Azure Stack HCI is what I would term loosely coupled. So you buy the hardware, then you go and download Windows Admin Center separately, you download the updates that you want to apply, and you go and orchestrate that across these different pieces to update and, de and deploy these systems. Uh, it's worked, it could work better. So with that, the Apex Cloud platform for Azure, we've built in an inbox deployment experience where when you boot up the hardware, there is a built-in deployment experience there for you to walk through and take that seamlessly end-to-end -end from initial uh, plugging in the network cables through to having your Azure Stack HCI up and running there. Oh, fantastic. So speaking of the deployment, and I love that we're making this easier and easier for customers. So again, as you said, like that's the great thing about the cloud, right, is like all these things are usually done for you. So you also want to have an easy experience on on prem um, as, as you can. So um, can you maybe show us a little bit like how this deployment experience looks like? Because I know that a lot of investments went into this to make it as easy as possible to deploy something like that. Absolutely. Um, so let me share my screen here. So here we have what you would see as the inbox deployment experience here. So you've turned on your Azure Stack HCI. There's a deployment IP address that you connect to. This is what you see here. Welcome to the Apex Cloud Platform and deploy the Apex Cloud Platform for Microsoft Azure Cluster. So the first thing you're going to do is click on this Get Started button. And that's going to show you the most important thing, which is a bunch of prerequisites. When you go to deploy any Azure Stack HCI system, there are a whole bunch of prereqs that you need to have in place. There are dependencies on Active Directory and NTP and having the correct networking setup and things like that. So we first of all guide you through what those prerequisites are. If you want to have the um, the, the different hosts auto-discovered, you can set the switch VLAN ID to 3939. We'll just auto-discover the servers that are going to be deployed there, so you don't need to input any of those manually. Um, create a service principle within Azure, for example, because we need to register this to Azure. This is an Azure service, so we need to register that within Azure. Make sure that your service principle is there. But once you've completed all of these prerequisites, once you've ticked all this off and you're good to go, um, there are a couple of different ways that we give you to actually go through this deployment. So step one is you can just do a step-by-step -step user input. So you see here down the left-hand side, you've got steps four through 14 here. You can go through these one by one, uh, go through everything it says and make sure you have everything filled in there to do your deployment. That's fine if you're doing uh, one or two deployments, that's absolutely fine to do. But if you want a lot of repeatable deployments, maybe you want to upload a configuration file. So we yeah. can pre-populate a JSON file there uh, for you. And you don't need to know JSON to do that. We will create, we will give you access to a Dell Apex Cloud Platform configuration portal. So you log on to the SaaS portal, you create a new project and you walk through end to end what your cluster is going to look like. And it will spit out a JSON file for you, which you then just upload into the deployment wizard and off it goes and does all that for you. So we're making it as easy and repeatable as possible to go through this deployment experience here. Uh, sound good? 
Yeah, that sounds really, really good. I, I think like this, especially that you can bring these config files. I just imagine, I mean, if you set up one of these things, you probably want to go through the wizard, like uh, like go through all this step by step. But then I was thinking like customers who have these different edge locations, for example, if they have like 20 or 30 or hundreds of these deployments, um, then you might really want to automate this process and use probably that, that config file to make it easy that you don't have to type all the things, right? You can pre prepare these uh, and then just send them out to the, to the IT staff or the staff who deploys these. Exactly. And what might change the host names and the cluster name mm -hmm. and I, the network settings, probably that's about it. So if you already have this JSON file and you just change those few settings and you're good to go with your next cluster, saves a lot of time and ensures that consistency as well. Um, for the purposes of this, we'll go through a step-by-step -step just to show some of these steps here, though, because uh, it's a bit boring just uploading a file and saying that's it, uh, I think. Um, so we click through to the resources first. This is going to auto-discover the different servers that we have available here because we're plugged into the same network. We're on the right VLAN. It auto-discovers these servers here. It does some pre-compatibility checks to make sure these are Apex Cloud Platform nodes uh, and that we're going to be able to use these here. Um, it gives you some advice around using a witness for your cluster. Um, for a two, three, four node cluster, I would say a witness is non-optional. Uh, you must always use a witness there. And whether that's a file share witness or an Azure Cloud witness, uh, those are two options there, but witness there, absolutely. You choose which switch topology you want. Do you want this to be switchless or switched? This refers to how the storage traffic is going to be passed. And um, if you have a small configuration, two, three, four node, uh, deployment, you can directly back to back connect the storage NICs and have all that storage traffic pass directly between the nodes, which is awesome. And um, for larger deployments, you can go with a switched or scalable deployments where you're going to be adding more nodes over time. You can go and use switches there. So again, we give you the option of which storage pattern you're going to pick within this uh, for this deployment as well. For the purposes here, we'll use a switched storage deployment pattern. Uh, you'll also note that one of these nodes is marked as the home one. This is the node which is going to run the deployment process. So the deployment process itself is happening in box within the cluster. This isn't something external. And one of these nodes has been marked as the, uh, the node which is going to run the deployment process for all the other ones here. So again, keeping this a tightly coupled inbox experience here without external dependencies. Um, a whole bunch of your settings are going to auto-populate within here, but you can go through and change them as well. These are things that it makes sense that you're going to need within Azure Stack HCI. What is your cluster name? Your Active Directory account for uh, creating your cluster object in AD, uh, your deployment account there, the domain, the, the DNS IP address there, and Windows Admin Center credentials there as well. All things that you need. Again, they could all be pre-populated in your JSON file there, or if you're doing one deployment, you can go through and click these and uh, enter these yourselves at, uh, as you go here. You can also choose whether you want to register with Windows Admin Center during the deployment or whether you want to do it after deployment. Um, it's a nicer experience if you register with Windows Admin Center during deployment, because right at the end, it's going to say, now just go to Windows Admin Center and everything's set up for you there. Uh, but you can manually do that after deployment as well, uh, if you so desire. Same with the Azure registration. Every Azure Stack HCI system needs to be registered to Azure and to an Azure subscription there. So we can do that as part of the deployment process as well. Or if you don't have the credentials yet, or you want to wait a bit, you can do that after uh, the fact as well. Both are options. So we're uh, enabling choice, not limiting options there. Um, we, we enter some server settings. So what is the, the server name here for each node? What is the IP range that you're going to be using? What is the local admin credentials? And then add some location here so we can tag what rack is this in? Are these in different racks? What is the rack position? What is the RU position for these as well so that we can pull this out through PowerShell or show it in Windows Admin Center in the future as well. So making it easier to administer by pre-tagging these in a specific location. And um, this is also useful for some fault domains later as well, but we won't get to that quite yet. Um, and then we use Network ATC for doing your network deployment. So Network ATC is Microsoft's preferred way of doing network deployment for Azure Stack HCI, and so it is ours as well. And Network ATC is an intent-based way of setting up the, the networking settings within an Azure Stack HCI system. So you can either have one intent or two here, a converged or non-converged networking setup here. Here we've got a two intent setup where we basically say, these two NICs are going to be for management and compute. These two NICs are going to be for storage. Go and set them up to be uh, those types of uh, NICs there. 
and Network ATC will take care of what that looks like here. Um, we support both Rocky and iWarp for the storage traffic here. Here we're using Intel E810 NICs with iWarp here, but Mellanox CX6s uh, something like that, also absolutely fine for your uh, storage traffic as well. So we enter the network settings. Uh, we make sure that that's all good. And then when we get to the next stage, it says, oh no, you didn't get your network settings right. You've put in overlapping IP ranges for your management and storage traffic, for example. Uh, so it'll detect that. It'll tell you you need to fix that. You go back and fix those settings. And then uh, you just click go. And that's about it. You've gone through the steps here. You click deploy the configuration. And it's going to deploy your Azure Stack HCI system. It'll give you an estimated time remaining to do that based on the cluster size uh, as well. And then when you're done, it's just going to tell you, go to Windows Admin Center at this address here, which you pre-populated, and you're going to be able to administer this from there. So super straightforward inbox experience. No need to go off elsewhere and download different things and uh, worry about uh, installing stuff separately. It's all built into the platform here and super straightforward and repeatable as well, uh, if you so desire. Yeah, I love these setup procedures uh, we built together, um, and especially like setup procedures which you like fill out everything in advance, and also love that check uh, for mistakes, mm -hmm. right? Like you don't want to run it and then later you while it's installing, like two, three minutes in or ten minutes in, is like, hey, you have overlapping IP addresses, I'm gonna cancel the whole thing. Um, so I love what we do. Like we set up everything up front, we we enter all the information we need, and we just go out and deploy it. Um, feels a little bit like Azure, right? When you mm. set something up, you actually fill out everything up front and then you go and deploy it. Um, so that that makes a lot of sense to me. All now, by design. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, now this, um, again, this is great. Now, obviously it's not just about deployment, right? It's like, okay, well, deployment is one enhancement which comes with this Apex platform. But um, also after I have this whole thing set up, um, you guys and also Microsoft did quite a lot of engineering to make make the administration operations of these things better, right? Yeah, definitely. And that is a key point. This is not a Dell built thing. This is a co-engineered thing between Dell and Microsoft. We've worked extremely closely together. Let's just rewind that. Um, extremely closely together to make sure that this is the best experience for our customers. So we don't just run off to a corner somewhere and build something and then say, how does this look? We are working hand in hand with Microsoft Engineering to uh, build a collaborative experience here to give the best experience to our customers. Um, and you'll see within Windows Admin Center here that there's a new extension down at the very bottom left here, the Dell Apex Cloud Platform extension. And this extension doesn't actually talk directly to the OS and it doesn't talk directly to the hardware. There's actually an intermediary layer here, which we call the Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software. So there's this VM running inside the Azure Stack HCI, which has a whole bunch of Dell services inside it. That's what the Dell Apex Cloud Platform extension talks to. Then that's what integrates with everything else. And because we have the complete freedom within that VM to, to create anything within that without uh, framework boundaries or anything like that, we can actually bring a much richer experience back into uh, Windows Admin Center as well. So you'll see across the top here that we have, yes, a dashboard. Uh, we have a physical view. The physical view is new. This will give you a nice... Uh, a view of the hardware there, the ability to click into that and then see individual components within that, see what's going wrong physically. So uh, if there is a network cable unplugged, for example, we can see that in the system physical view. It makes it very easy for troubleshooting there, not wondering what is NIC 1 slash 1 again? Which one was that when I go and look at that on a server? No, you can actually see it there as well. We have compliance reporting for uh, configuration drift detection. Um, so one of the things that we've worked on with Microsoft here is implementing what we call a known good state for Azure Stack HCI. So saying here is a state of Azure Stack HCI from a OS, BIOS, driver, firmware perspective that we know is a known good state. If you are running these versions of these things in this way, this will work brilliantly. Um, and we're always checking to make sure that you're not drifting away from that known good state. By drifting, I mean some well-meaning admin has logged in and decided to update a BIOS setting, for example. We make sure that you stay within the bounds, which are tested by Dell and Microsoft together to do that. Uh, we have this update pane here as well. So if you have any updates available, it'll show within here. You can click into the updates and it will tell you what's available. These are, again, what I would term tightly coupled updates. So this isn't just we download the Microsoft ones and make them available. Dell and Microsoft together validate that these updates will work well in this known good state on the system. And we provide a single update package to apply to this. And then 
take it to a known good state there. So it's an intent-based update process there as well, saying we're here just now, take us to this known good state and have the update process take us through there as well. In this instance, we're seeing that it's actually the Dell Cloud Platform Foundation software that has a new release. So the secret sauce that runs inside this, which does all this integration, it needs its own uh, updates. We'll give some indication of the time to install and the reboots required to deliver this as well. Um, you'll see a compliance report as to what needs to be in place before you do the update. Here you'll see that some well-meaning admin has logged in and installed a, a BIOS update here, which isn't necessarily the right one to stay in that compliant state. So we can remediate that from within here as well. So we can both see what the compliance report is and remediate from within here as well to make sure you're, you're in a good state before you do the upgrade. Um, and then when you go to deliver the update, once you've done that remediation there, you're good to go. So everything shows green. We're good to go. We're good to perform the update. Uh, and it basically, it's going to download the updates that are available, ones that we have already packaged together with Microsoft, cool those down, and then apply those. Now, you can download them from our online catalog, or you can uh, do them from a local SMB share if you want. Maybe you have 100 clusters to update, and you don't want 100 clusters pulling down updates individually. Download them once and apply them from your own local repository. Absolutely fine as well. But the key is that these are uh, completely checked and validated and in this known good configuration from Dell and Microsoft uh, right from the start. This is awesome. I mean, both of us worked in service providers prior to our current roles. We've worked with systems like this. Uh, I don't know about you, but one of the biggest pain points for me in my job as a service provider was making sure that hardware updates were in place. And anytime I had to phone up an OEM to say something's gone wrong, the first question is always, well, have you applied the latest updates? Are you in a state that we've said is good? And you're like, no, I'll go and do it now. And off you go. Well, here it's a click and you're in compliance. Super yeah. simple. No, I again, I this really shows now how do things come together, right? It's like if it comes together with software updates and hardware, <laughs> hardware software updates, if you will, um, and bring this together and making it super easy. I don't need to go and fiddle and figure out, okay, now I need to go down and figure out which is the right network driver. Then I have to go, there is a, a, a controller HPA in there where I need to dry, probably update drive updates and things like that. It's like one package, right? And I think that that is also really, really powerful. Uh, makes it super easy actually to to keep the whole system current uh, and keep it in the, in the validated and, and in a state, right? Exactly. And it's this um, Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software which is doing that. So the same innovation that we brought into the uh, VMware world, we now have in the Azure Stack HCI world. Uh, so you have your cluster running there, one to 16 nodes, completely supported from an Azure Stack HCI perspective. We have Windows Admin Center there as the core management plane as well. And then running on top that Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software, which is that integration and communication path, not just within there, but also up to Azure and to Azure Arc as well. And more and more over time, you're going to see features and functionality being exposed through into Azure as well. So think things like uh, fleet management of your clusters and the ability to do multi-cluster updates from Azure, uh, for example. That is something we can enable now through this experience as well. So just making it better and better and better from an Azure perspective, uh, mm -hmm. enabling a whole bunch of different features and, and capabilities here. I'm not going to drain this slide. We'll have it on screen here. But it is about day one, day two, day 2000, everything there that goes into making sure that uh, you have the easiest experience so that you can focus on the Azure features and the functionality there, because that's really where the power is in this platform. Yeah, no, I agree. Again, it makes it super simple to deploy and then also operate that infrastructure and that cloud platform, if you will. And that then enables you, obviously, now to use things, as you just mentioned, together with Azure Arc uh, to bring down Azure services, for example, not just manage it from Azure, but also bring down Azure services using AKS, our Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Stack HCI, and then enable Arc-enabled services such as Azure SQL, for example. Um, and again, get that all in the in that location in that edge location or data center where you want it to run right where you need it to run so um absolutely absolutely great uh, and again super happy about uh, the co-engineering uh, microsoft and dell did here well on that co-engineering let's talk about one other feature that we've co-engineered in this uh, platform to be unique as well well actually no we'll, we'll have a dell hardware slide first because why not you can't have a dell slide without hardware in there uh, and there are a few different form factors we're bringing out here yes you've got your standard rack mounted one u two u systems here that you would expect uh, for anything that we're releasing we're also releasing an edge optimized system here as well nice. which can be vesa mounted 
which has intelligent dust filters, which can go into more uh, less data center centric environments, we'll say. So like a factory floor or a retail environment, things like that. So uh, platforms there are optimized for edge and robo there. So that's a new addition to our Azure Stack HCI lineup here. But from a co-engineering perspective, there is one other thing that's really exciting here from my perspective about this. Um, and that is uh, extending the storage options within Azure Stack HCI. Because up until now, we have had the awesomeness that is Storage Spaces Direct within Azure Stack HCI. And I do mean awesomeness because it is really high performance. Uh, it is effectively free within the platform as well. There is no per terabyte cost or anything like that. Do you have your Azure Stack HCI? And Storage Spaces Direct is included in that and unlimited use of it. But within any hyper-converged infrastructure, there are boundaries you're going to push up against. So for example, if you have a small compute requirement and a large storage requirement, that's a difficult thing to achieve within a hyper-converged infrastructure. Or if you have a really big storage footprint requirement, something that goes beyond the capabilities of a 16 node cluster, that's difficult to do as well. Or if you want to have a shared storage pool between multiple clusters uh, for making migration of workloads between those clusters easy, that can be a challenge as well. So in that spirit of co-engineering, we have now worked with Microsoft to build in the capability to add Dell block software defined storage alongside here to extend the Azure Stack HCI storage, not to replace. This is to enable and extend those opportunities that haven't been possible before, both for VM workloads and for your Kubernetes based workloads as well through a validated CSI driver for that as well. So I love this because it's opening new opportunities for our joint customers they've not been able to do before. Um, and if you, have, if you have a storage requirement that needs a thousand nodes there, we can do that here, uh, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, this, this is what you brought up, right? It's like, okay, well, there are certain scenarios when customers need more storage um, than compute. And again, like in some cases, obviously with hyper-converged, you cannot necessarily scale them separately, right? So this is a great way of enabling uh, these scenarios and really <laughs> empowering our customers there. Awesome. And as part of the system as well. So not on day one, but very shortly thereafter day one, this will be considered a part of that Azure Stack HCI system as well. So if you're using the external storage, you'll see it within Windows Admin Center, you'll be able to handle lifecycle management of that seamlessly. It is one system here, not something that we're just bolting onto the side, but something that we're considering a core part of the platform as well. Awesome, this is fantastic. So. Um, like in terms of time, there's obviously much, much more um, that, that you, we could talk about, right? And maybe we do some follow-up videos on this as well. Um, but again, like there's, uh, again, I want to thank you very much for your time here. And if customers are now interesting, or if someone watching this video and is interested to learn more about this, um, where should they go? <laughs> Your Dell uh, account executive, in the first instance, they'll be able to help you. From a blog perspective, we'll put some links in here. Uh, geos.2 slash ACP Azure is a short URL for our announcement blog there. Uh, ping me on Twitter. My um, my Twitter handle is there. Always happy to chat to anyone. You can also book some time in my calendar at geos.2 slash Kenny. You can just go to that and book a meeting with me, and we can have a chat as well. So all sorts of options. I will say that we are around four months out from release at this point. So September is our target timeframe for release. Um, and we'll be releasing a whole bunch of other information between now and then as well. So absolutely right. We should have some follow-ups uh, between now and then as well. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kenny, uh, for this call. And again, thank you for everyone watching. Thank you.